Hi, this is going to be a description on how to use photogrammetry as a base for digital art. This is going to be a technical overview to outline some of my workflows and procedures. I use two pieces of photogrammetry software, one called Colmap and one called Multiview Environment. Colmap requires an NVIDIA GPU where a multi-view environment will run on your CPU so it can run on any system. I use Cloud Compare for filtering and Blender for animation and rendering. Colmap has some great documentation on photogrammetry and has some links to papers that contain extra detail on photogrammetry. Um, you can see these are some of the photos that I've taken. Some of them have quite a lot of motion blur in them. Usually for photogrammetry that isn't good, but for our process, since we're trying to introduce uh, an impressionistic and maybe noisy image, that's useful. Once I've captured the images I need for the point cloud, I'll take a video for the motion tracking and take any extra notes of the scene like sun direction and lighting. With both multi-view environment and call map, I had spent quite a lot of time at the beginning uh, designing um, a set of parameters to run the program with to get the desired outcome. I've sort of designed the look of the point clouds around this very sort of noisy, impressionistic style. Um, and that sort of takes a bit of work with each program to discover how to sort of force that, um, that digital error. So this is a set of around 30 point clouds that I made with Colmap when I was first experimenting with it. Once I was happy with the result, I saved all the parameters into a batch file and now I can run those batch files on any image set and um, get a point cloud quite quickly. So you can see here that I've got the information for my Colmap script on the left and my information for my MVE script on the right. Um, there's a multi-view environment script running uh, right there. So that's what happens. This takes quite a while sometimes, depending on how many pictures you use. Um, but once the script's run, you can open it up in a, a program like Cloud Compare to edit, manipulate, and filter the point cloud. Uh, you can see this point cloud's got 62.5 million points, so filtering is needed before we put it into Blender. You want around about a million points uh, for Blender. Um, by default, Cloud Compare re recommends uh, space subsampling. Uh, I don't particularly like this method of subsampling as it removes a lot of the noise and uh, harsh edges uh, created by high density of points. Um, this sort of averages out the density over the whole point cloud. So I use random subsampling, which more efficiently um, keeps details and retains um, edges and areas of density, um, but re efficiently reduces the overall number of points. So you can see these two clouds with the exact same number of points. The one filtered randomly retains a lot of the sharper edges and detail. This is the motion tracked video inside of Blender, ready to set up as a tracking scene and get the um, tracking data onto a camera so I can use that within the scene. Blender does not natively support point clouds, so you're going to see need to use a third party add-on. There's quite a few available, but the one I use is Point Cloud Visualizer. It can perform lots of tasks on point clouds, but the thing I'm most interested in is the convert options. You can convert to primitives or more complex things like particle systems or instances. There is a free version available of the software on GitHub, but it's an older version, or you can get the more up-to-date version on Blender Market and support the developer. You could even end the whole process here and render within Point Cloud Visualizer, but this does not use Cycles or EV. Um, once you've got that add-on in Blender, you can then import your Point Cloud onto an object. And this is where I just align it within Blender. I find this the easiest program to get all of that stuff done within, as I'm quite familiar with how to rotate, scale and transform within Blender. And you can see this is very, very fast. Um, so we kind of want to uh, manipulate it as much as possible within Point Cloud Visualizer before we convert it into um, an object in Blender since you know, there is a performance loss. The type of object that you convert to in Point Cloud Visualizer will be dictated by what you want to do with your Point Cloud. Um, for example, if you want to do particles you know, using a particle system and etc. Um, but for the most basic and high performance option, a simple mesh is probably best. When converting to any mesh, it's important to adjust your size to the required visual density. The particle system is only available through cycles and is also very, very intensive, so I wouldn't really recommend it for animations. Once we've got that converted after a while, 
we can come through to material preview and actually view the point cloud within Blender now. So now we have a point cloud with around a million points and we can see the individual cubes making up the entire piece. And this is the initial basis that you're going to need to be making a work with point clouds within Blender. You want to get your motion tracked camera and align it with the cloud. This is quite difficult. I haven't found a very good way of performing this process, apart from a lot of trial and error and yeah, manual labor. But once all of this is done, it's time for shading and rendering the more fun visual aspects of the work. So this is, yeah, the main process that I perform to make point clouds. I hope that explains it. I would love for there to be um, communication and discourse about this kind of medium. So feel free to get in contact or comment. Cheers.